voted out. That was the observation not of a party politician, but a football club chairman. In one borough election, football has become an issue. Marcus Powell reports. It was actually about a local political issue. It's something that affects... In central London, the creative team from one of the country's top advertising agencies are plotting their latest campaign. So what we do with the, the campaign, really? Staff here used to help the Labour Party, but some have changed sides. We've got an excellent campaign there in the great... BMP well, tradition of uh, issue advertising. Mm. It's, it's probably a, a, a bigger campaign than, than, than the major political parties could manage in normal circumstances. Yeah. So if you were to picture one of those young... They're discussing the politics of football. Agency director Richard Hunt is an avid Charlton Athletic fan, campaigning to put the club top of the local political agenda. Yeah, I mean, I think they stand up against... Um, any other political advertising, you know, they're, they're strong, they're bold, and um, hopefully they'll get people to vote Valley. Their message, Vote Valley, has been plastered throughout Greenwich, a political salvo aimed at the local Labour Council. Charlton fans became politicians when the council threw out their plans to return to their home ground at the Valley. The Valley Party was formed by supporters in exile at Crystal Palace's Selhurst Park in distant Croydon. They'll put up 60 candidates in the local elections on Thursday, making them by far the biggest opposition party to challenge the Labour stronghold in Greenwich. Their single manifesto pledge to get Charlton back to the Valley. I think a great many people in Greenwich and elsewhere are very angry with the council. Um, because they gave this undertaking that they would support the club coming back and they've broken it. Um, that's why there is a Valley Party in the elections. At their peak in the 40s, long before Charlton became a political football, the Valley was filled by 70,000 spectators, the biggest crowds in the country. But fortunes faded. Financial Charlton crisis overtook the club. The Survival meant the more than just scoring Dublin. goals. Over brother's head. One north to Charlton. There were protests five years ago after the last Valley match. The fans didn't want to move to Selhurst Park. They could only take souvenirs. Their Valley ground was closed for safety reasons. It remains derelict and deserted today, still awaiting the club's return. The porter cabins at Crystal Palace offer Charlton a temporary but unpopular home. The new Charlton directors have been campaigning to get the club back to the valley. They dream of a new all-seater stadium with offices and a banqueting suite. It's a multi-million pound plan to be financed by building houses on the back of the site. Greenwich Council was told of the plans to build houses and raised no objections. So at a public meeting a year ago, the club chairman Roger Alwyn announced a return to the valley. Supporters who'd waited five years for the news were overjoyed. The council leader, Dave Picton, backed the plan. Charlton has a great past, and I think it's now got a great future. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that when the formal processes have been gone through, that future is going to be back at the valley. Charlton supporters seem to have achieved their goal. But unknown to them, Greenwich planners later put the finishing touches to a new borough plan. This blueprint prevented commercial development at the valley. Buildings will only be permitted where they are ancillary to the existing land uses. So at a planning meeting in January, the club's development scheme was thrown out and the political battles began. Do you think you've been betrayed by the council? Oh, certainly. Certainly. I mean, since... Within a very short time, Councillor Picton was no longer the leader. The borough plan had changed, and it's been a fight ever since. So the Valley Party entered the political arena. Candidates like Kevin Fox are campaigning, hoping the council's U-turn will rebound on them at the election. Good morning. My name's Kevin Fox. I represent the Valley Party. If I could get your support, then I'll promise you honesty and a bit of fairness in the council. I can't say more than that. Can I get your support? 
I'm sorry, I'm going to vote for some uh, for a proper political party. Which is who? Uh, Social... Probably the Labour Party. I'm sorry. Really? Yeah. Labour look like Thank certain you. winners in Greenwich, but they've created passionate opponents. I'm not really a political animal. I didn't want to get involved in politics, but the more I look into this council and I see what's happening, the more involved I'm becoming. And I'm certainly very concerned about the way the council behave. I think their decision at the moment has been unjust unfair and undemocratic and uh, I want to change things. <laughs> the Labour old guard are confident nothing will change and they'll increase their grip on the council. Other mainstream opposition parties aren't contesting many of the seats so the Valley Party have become more of an issue on the doorstep. Good evening. Good evening Mr Bennett. I'm Bob Callow and this is Quentin Marsh from the Labour Hello. Party and we're at Camps in uh, for local council elections on May the 3rd and we're asking you if, if we can count on your support on May the 3rd. Well, I was thinking about the, um, about the Valley Party. About the Valley Party? Yeah. I've supported Charlton and I was just seeing the Valley come back to well, yeah. Yeah. So would we. So would we. I mean, um, I actually did su support them on the night. I was one of the two. Um, I know Quinton well, would like to see them back bread here. And I was brought up with Charlton yeah. playing at the Valley. Labour say they support Charlton, but the Valley Party is a different ball game. Clearly they're in the business of getting their message across not of actually winning seats running a council because nowhere do they talk about the programme that they have to run a council to cope with poll tax capping, to cope with the provision of services, to cope with other parts of the boroughs than just the area around the Valley Football Ground. In Greenwich Town Hall, councillors have been accused of using dirty tricks to block Charlton's return to the Valley. Council officers have been caught in the crossfire and also criticised for being anti-football. The chief planning officer, Sandra Hunt, has reacted to those sort of remarks, threatening libel writs against the Charlton chairman, Roger Alwyn, the supporters' magazine editor, Rick Everett, and the local paper, The Mercury. Also caught in the crossfire is another planning officer, David Hyam. He wasn't involved in vetting the Valley application, but has told the council of his interest as a resident. Mr Hyam played a leading part in campaigning against Charlton's return. He was involved in producing a leaflet. It spoke of speculative offices, the noise and nuisance likely to be caused. It called the club's ideas crazy. Supporters are generally critical of council officers. I think the part played by people within the planning department and the planning department in general is quite extraordinary. If somebody lives in a local area, it is quite legitimate for them to wish to express their own view about an application about the way their life is being changed in their view. Many residents share the view that Charlton's plans would bring too much development to a congested area. I mean the area is surrounded by housing on all four sides, very similar to a lot of London clubs, but the scale of what they're proposing is totally out of order. Well, it's to go a big new stand here would include an office block, but it's not just the commercial development they're opposed to. Well I'm worried about the hooligan element because we were told chance supporters were not hooligans and I was in two minds until I went to the public meeting and I, I, I was astounded by their behaviour. We were spat at, we were threatened uh, with uh, physical violence outside. We had to be escorted out of the building by the police because of the behaviour of Charlton fans. People around here don't want football back and don't want the development back. And what they're concerned about is the emotion that's been tied up with this and the loss of perspective with the Valley Party's emergence. If the council can turn down an all-seater stadium, what next will they turn down? That's right. You know. With everyone complaining, the ballot box may be the best way to sort things out before Charlton appeal against the council's decision. Charlton may not win the cup again, but they have a chance on Thursday of scoring against those who've blocked their return to the Valley. Isn't it true that everything the clubs say they need to make football financially viable at the Valley, you will in fact turn down on planning grounds? Not at all. So, what will you allow? We will accept a planning application that fits in with our policies. Which and allows it's virtually no commercial development? <clears throat> On that particular site, there is an indication in the borough plan that 5,000 square foot is the acceptable office development. But the council know that wouldn't make football pay. I don't think they have any intention of letting us play football there again. 
Well, they will do everything they possibly can to stop us. So the war of words goes on. Now they take us seriously and see that we can do joined up handwriting and can get our applications in successfully. And now they've seen that we can actually run a campaign which can actually beat the pants off them in terms of professionalism. They now seem to be indignant that we are intruding in some kind of private game called party politics and that we as ordinary people have no right to interfere in this private game. This is yet another game that Charlton really need to win. All the election results, including doubtless the number of votes won by the Valley Party, will be on a Thames News election special starting at 5 past 11 on Thursday night.